To the podcast, hablemos de lo nuevo. Yeah. For the G's, by the G's, que pasa en el terreno. Vienen jugadores y se van, traiga lo nuevo. A huevo, doesn't matter where you're from. Salvador, Mexico, Honduras, Nicaragua. Todo mi latino, come and listen for our TikTok. TikTok. Que traemos lo que quiere, todo lo que pasa dentro y fuera de las redes. Really? You don't know what it is. Reportamos con la lupa, but we see at the dicks. En las buenas y en las malas, yo diré la verdad. Si cometen un error o tienen habilidad, la calidad del rival cuando viene a jugar. Facts. Yo no me muerdo la lengua. Got love for the crest in the city I came from. Los campeones de campeones y con copas me raise. Donde empezamos el programa, soy la voz de LA One. Soy la voz de LA One. Love. Hello, hola, and buenas, buenas to all you LA Galaxy fans out there, you Lacuna Galaxians. Thanks so much for hanging with us tonight and being here on this preview of another edition of El Tráfico. I'm one of your co-hosts, Rob Halon. You can find my written work at Last Word on Sports. And then, of course, you can find me bugging you, as always, online at El Escudero de L.A., Today, we're going to be getting into that El Tráfico preview. We'll be joined by our special guest, MLS.com and SBI soccer journalist, Justin Ruderman. But before we get to him, let me go ahead and bring back my co-host, the one and only ride or die, G and a homie, Ananda Kirana, El Gitano Perdido. It's El Tráfico week, papa. ¿Cómo te estás sintiendo? Wow, como es. Como, como siento? I mean, man, like just uh, so if we're going to do this one word thing, right, Robert, uh, I guess the one word I would tell you is I'm ready. I'm ready. It's time, man. It's time, Papa. Let, let, let's let's get all the all the all the band, all the banter aside. You know, all you guys put in the, the out those good vi vibes in in X in the X Landia. I mean, wild the, right the, now. The, the, the banter. I, see, I think I saw a tweet. It uh, it said that it's on a it's at an eleven right now. From a scale of one to ten, the banter and the back and forth is at about an eleven. Um, no I matches. Mean, well, it's at like it's at like a twenty right now. Like I've seen <laughs> all kinds of different like discussions and just like people are, are going at it hardcore. Um, but I'm ready. I'm ready. That's that's my one word. And by the way, chat like. Once you get in here, uh, welcome everyone. Obviously, uh, let us know how you're feeling. Give us your one word since we're doing this one. We like this one word thing, right? Yeah, we, li uh, we like that generally. Yeah, t tell us how you're feeling in one word. Are you are like for me? I'm I'm ready. I'm ready for this game. I think uh, I'm one of those guys that it's it's all action, less talk. Let let's get to it. Now we the banter aside, oh, the banter oh, yes, no breaks. The, the the banter has been flowing but now it's it, it's time it's time to play it's time to get on the pitch it's time to get on those 90 plus minutes and it's time to show what we're made of uh, as the LA Galaxy and uh you know hopefully we'll talk to Justin about uh is this will this be a game that sort of marks the 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 beginning of the rise of the sleeping giant or not we'll see yeah, well, um, like I said, they they've been going nutty. Y'all have been going nutty on on X Twitter. I've I've just generally stayed out of all those shenanigans. But um, one of the tweets that I that I really did enjoy was uh, somebody put up a tweet about like you know, kind of like what we do, like well, you know what city you're repping, which reminds me what city you're repping. Uh, but you know they they call out you know like where where do you support the LA Galaxy from? And you saw all kinds of cities, right. all kinds of countries. I mean, it's what we talk about here all the time. Like, the community here is is lovely, but we're not just limited to the community here. We're we're, you know, locally grown, globally known, just just like the brand says. So uh, anyway, right. Um, right. shout out to all the cities that are supporting the LA Galaxy and this humble little podcast, of course. Uh, we got Whittier in the house. Uh, of course, we got Big Heck in the IE. Shout out to you, Raul. Uh, thank you so much for being here once again, as always. Um, Man, we really appreciate it. Uh, you know what? Uh, heck, I think you're gonna you're gonna get a, a wild 
uh, Kitano Perdido sighting over there in the IE. Uh, you know, you, you guys will, will probably hook up on that a little bit later. But um, Robert, anyway, we, guys, we might need to give some advice to uh, Lopsang Ventura here. It's going to be his first away game, and he Ooh. chose the that other stadium up the 110. Any advice? I'm meeting G's at the LA Live. Wow. Well, that, that's going to be quite an experience, my friend. Ooh, yeah, it is. Um, well, I, I don't know. Like, I'm not clear. Uh, Lobsang, are you going to be going with the supporting uh, G's on the bus and, and you know, you won the lottery? Is, is that what you're talking about? Because if so, uh, you know, sunscreen, um, you know, take some funds for, for water because you're going to be there a while in the stands, kind of like waiting for the game to start um and just be smart and take care of your, yeah. your people um other than that you bring, know, bring, uh, bring your captain america shield in case there's any projectiles uh, thrown but you know <laughs> yeah it, it, exactly i mean it, it's it's always uh it's always a little bit wild um so so yeah uh he lob saying did did in fact yeah. uh win that lottery and he's going with the nice away supporters so yeah it's it's just a bit of a wait you know you get there early uh for security's sake or, or you know what they say security's sake and then you, you kind of hang out for like two or three hours until the game starts so you know um like i said stay hydrated that that's yeah. all I, um but yeah uh you're gonna love it the the atmosphere uh the g's just go all out uh they have one uh chant in particular ananda that that i love uh, that I that I can't actually say here because it, it is a, a family yeah, show. Yeah, yeah, right, right, right. Do with the bird that is, and, and you know, and then that bird has, is no longer there anymore. So uh, you know, <laughs> awesome. that bird, that bird said, "Peace out." Uh, but anyway, um, so yeah, we we got a lot to cover today because it is a think We do have a special guest, Justin Ruderman, uh, su super nice guy. Uh, I've really been enjoying his writing for for MLS. Um, yeah, th there he is, and that's at the CVI. Um, if, yep. if I don't, if I'm not mistaken, because I recognize that tower behind him. Uh, so yeah, we'll have him on in a little bit. But before we get to him, uh, Ananda, you didn't do your thing, and you know what? <sighs> yeah, I just got too got too excited about. El, el hago Gráfico, recuerdo, man. hago recuerdo todas las semanas que, yeah. o sea, me vas a tener que dar como como un allowance para recordarte, you know? Yeah, lo sé, lo siento, lo siento. Well, I, I got Kobe too Cosmo about is el... reminding you too, bro. Like he, he's back there, like, <laughs> hey, what's up, Theo? Come on. I know he still wants to make his guest experience, Papa. But anyways, okay, housekeeping, boys. Uh, before we get to the good stuff, so of, of course you can always follow and girls. me or stalk me and girls as well, uh, and dogs and and little pooches and you know all that good stuff. Uh, so yeah, you can always follow block me or stalk me at Ananda Galaxiana. You guys can always find us on all of our socials and all of our wheelings and dealings on all of your favorite socials at Lacuna Galaxiana. Uh, if this is your first time on a YouTube plat platform, welcome. If you are coming back, uh, welcome back boys and girls. Like we love you all again. Uh, we love interacting with the chat. This has been one of the best things for us going on YouTube is just interacting with you guys live and doing these live streams with y'all. And, and, and this is super fun. So, uh, but if you want to help out this little channel, if you want to help us, we're trying to grow this little channel, uh, this little humble pod that Rob and I started over wings, uh, the beginning of last year, uh, you we guys can like, go ahead and, and, and like, shoot hey, us a like, wing. if you we like what you're hearing, galaxy. exactly. If you like what you're hearing, sh uh, give us a like, uh, put someone on, share this video. And if you haven't subscribed to us, guys, we are at 150 subscribers. We are on, Thank our, you. We are on oh, yeah. our way to, to, to the next milestone, 200. So let's, let's, let's get there. But if you guys uh, do want to give us a subscribe, so you guys will know pretty much when we're having these live streams uh, and, and maybe some additional you know, surprise live streams along the way. But we will work on that and let you guys know. And Roberto, como siempre, antes de olvidarme, buenos días, tardes, o oh, noches, because you know what's funny? Like maybe some people like don't understand why I said that. I said that at the very, very beginning of the show because, of course, some of you are live right now, so muy buenas noches to you guys. Some of you are listening to this at the gym in the morning or in the middle of your day, so it's buenos días o buenas tardes, you know? Uh, so that's kind of how I do that. And, and I think uh, a lot, some, someone asked me the other day, so I, I thought I'd say it live on the show, like why I do that. Uh, so that, that is the origin story of that. And of course, bienvenidos a otro capítulo de la Cuna Galaxiana. It's a big one, man. El Tráfico Week. The banter is running wild. And shoot, well, let's, let's react to it with everyone in chat. I mean, we could play it cool and be like, eh, it's just another game. But you know what? Like, nah, it's, nah. It's, yeah, it's, 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 <laughs> it, it's, it's not. Um, you nice know one. what? Uh, well yeah, played, no, no. Well played. But yeah, um, as always, we'll have the match reaction 
to El Tráfico on Monday night, uh, n- Monday night at 9 p.m. So look out for that, guys. And of course, I, I got to do my 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 weekly shout out here for uh, anybody that's going to be going to Austin and playing SADA with us. See Ananda, drink Ananda. It's you know what you you see him in Austin, you you tag him and and he's got a drink. Them's the rules. I don't make them. Bugs Bunny made them, and he's infallible. So anyway. Um, <clears throat> We have a lot to get through, like you said, uh, and and we have um, not just the LA Galaxy first team to talk about, but the LA Galaxy Academy as well, who took part in the GA Cup. The U15s and U17s topped their groups, so they went on to the round of 16. Unfortunately, the U15s fell 4-1 to to the San Jose Earthquakes in the round of 16, uh, but they, they had a great showing, so congratulations to them. The U-17s beat River Plate in the round of 16. They ended up 2-2 in regulation, and then they won 5-4 in penalties. Uh, in, in the media availability today, Greg scampered off as soon as he was done because apparently his boys, uh, twin boys, Dylan and Mason, are in the squad, and they they were playing, and that was going to be televised, or at least for, for Greg anyway. So uh, he, he scampered off, but congratulations to them. I mean, that's a huge win. River Plate's one of the traditional powerhouses in South America and Argentina. Um, you, you have some fantastic players that have come out of that team and out of that academy. So congratulations to the U-17s. They'll be playing Sporting Kansas City in the quarterfinals. Um, again, that's you, you can't emphasize how how big beating a team like River Plate is Ananda because that just shows the, the the growth of the academy and again kind of what we were talking about the other day in that now there's an identity from from top to bottom or we, we see the the identity being implemented from top to bottom so congratulations to the U17s we'll be cheering you on against Sporting Kansas City and then man uh he done miracles on us so we got to show him some love happy birthday to Will Koontz the LA Galaxy general manager he joined the Galaxy in April 2023 as the Senior Vice President of Player Personnel. Just a couple months later, on December 5th, 2023, he was named General Manager. One of my favorite quotes by him, I want to do big and big things, and I know that I'm, we're supported from ownership all the way down through the club, so that's what we're here to do. Uh, like you said, Ananda, um, all gas, no breaks, or maybe I said that in reference to you, but uh, you know what? No excuses no fluff in that statement. Look, we're going to do big, ambitious things, and that's what we're about. Uh, so I love I, it. Uh, so- I thought you were going to say, uh, like you said, best signing best signing in the Galaxy in the last however many years. So, I mean, he, he really has been the best signing, man. It, it's Wait, you said that or I said that? I, uh, I can't remember. We'll, we'll, we'll both claim it. How about that? Yeah, yeah. No, that, that was, a, that was a, a, a group thing. But you know what, man? Um, I've... I've said this on this pod before that you know i covered the team for about three years before will Koontz's tenure and i yeah. think i saw um the former uh galaxy president the outgoing uh president he who shall not be named not be named yep uh we don't want to jinx anything right now um so anyway i, I maybe saw him once in three years and seeing will is just like a a very commonplace thing now and it's it's so great that the team is becoming this transparent uh people are available uh so shout out to him on his birthday i hope whatever you're doing whatever wherever you are you're you're getting the rest and relaxation that you so richly deserved on on your nascent day uh and then tomorrow it's right back to that that race to safe right so uh but i was thinking about all the things that that he's done so far in his in his about one year um and uh you know i i have my favorite thing that he's done but what about you ananda and and chat too like what, what do you think has been uh will Koontz's biggest accomplishment so far wow um oh i like i like it when you when you get stumped and you're like wow get, uh well oh. i was gonna say this i was gonna be f- a little facetious about this but uh sell efra for a million or so <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean that that's not no. that's not a bad business though. Know, that is not bad business. No, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. That's like it's crazy that we got that much money for him. You know what I mean? Like it's right. it, it's pretty nuts. No, man, but I think uh, I think just like what you said to be honest, it's 
not just he knows what he's doing transfer wise and that the, all those merits speak for itself but i think he's he's transformed the culture right and i don't know if it's just him or it's or there's some other people involved behind the scenes but he's transformed this culture man from top to bottom he he's transformed it overnight into a winning culture and whether that a winning culture means a level of transparency for the press for the fans whether that means um recognizing that the level of quality or the level of performance or the level of where this LA Galaxy organization needs to be is not there and he needed to clean house right it's he he transformed this culture as Christian Miles said in a couple a few shows ago he represents a paradigm shift for this LA Galaxy organization i am going to bring that up by the way cuz i really really liked what what C Miles had to say and, and sort of how he synthesized it in the fact that in in this idea Forest. of a paradigm shift um and so i will come back to that point too because i think it's important when we when we look at this lafc this this el, el trafico match against lafc but yeah I, I think that's that's the biggest thing man just transform this this culture to a winning culture mm. you know what my my favorite thing is uh pretty recent um and and it's it's only recency bias probably because uh, he's done a lot of good stuff but um paint still i mean i i don't think uh without him a player like Pencil comes here. Um, so I think just like the negotiations, the uh, the the contacts, the the structure that he's put in place, like you kind of said, like you kind of mentioned, is uh, has has led to us being able to make signings like that. So uh, good on him. Uh, happy birthday to the chef. Um, and you know what? I know he's going to be just as vested in this one as Gaps fans are. So uh, good luck to him this weekend as well um moving along from the birthday boy uh register for la galaxy leagues from april 1st to june 7th uh whether you're an adult or youth um you can get in on the action and play some la galaxy leagues at galaxy park contact programs at lagalaxy.com for more info if you want to know how to sign up of course we we were talking to chat earlier about what to do if it's your first time at away at BMO, what it's like. But if you're not going to be at BMO, uh, there's going to be several watch parties all over the place. <clears throat> we could uh, expect nothing else really from, from you know, this, this community. But uh, the Galaxy are doing their official watch party at Dignity Health Sports Park at Galaxy Park. Uh, of course, this weekend on Saturday, uh, Corner of the Galaxy will also be doing a live show there. Uh, hit up Corner of the Galaxy socials and their webpage for more info on where they're setting up and what time. Uh, shout out to uh, Josh and Corner of the Galaxy. Uh, good luck to you guys as well. Um, and then uh, shout out to uh, Brian, uh, a.k.a. Man Called Bigsby, and everybody that was at the York last week. Or was it last week or the week before last? Yeah, the week before uh, last. Week, week before last. Two, two yeah. Weeks ago. yeah. So they're getting together for the York part two. Uh, so if you're a G in the uh, SGV Glendale Pasadena area, go ahead and stop by the York and get together with a really fun group of G's. Um, you know, I didn't have the food myself, but everybody was talking about how the food was great. So hit them up. Um, you know, like I said, a lot of options. Absolution Brewing is also doing a watch party. Um, they'll have a pop-up shop with uh, FU Labs that day. Uh, we already talked about uh, Big Heck and the IEGs. They're going to be out at Common Ground Public House at 430 um you know what ananda you're gonna have to tell me because uh, i'm gonna miss out on that one obviously but you're gonna have to tell yeah. me um you know who who wins this raffle and and giveaway uh and and you know what it might even be you yeah it might even be yeah if if anyone's if anyone's gonna be there uh, i think heck just let you know I, I i am i think i hit you up about it i i am planning to be there hopefully so uh yeah if anyone's there come up say hi let's let's have a beer together and hopefully we will enjoy a galaxy win together as well um so like i mentioned a lot of watch parties which can be shown uh if you're if you're watching this pod right now can can be seen here on on this graphic that that acb usually makes um they they usually put all these watch parties on here plus the ones we already mentioned so uh geez you have a lot of options let us know in the chat where you're going to be pulling up where you're going to be showing out and where you're going to be rocking your best la galaxy gear um you know what we we can't wait to see all the pictures of everybody together i mean that's that's part of the fun of of you know these these things man is you know these 
big games that like everybody comes together and uh, has a great time. And uh, speaking of coming together and having a great time, well, for for the for the most part, uh, except when you're Lacuna Matata and you don't make the playoffs, uh, <laughs> League League G is for for the most part a, a, a good time. Uh, we already told you guys that the semifinals were happening. That happened last night on the third. Um, man, uh, there was there was a lot of good games to talk about in this one. Uh, number one, Mama went against number five, Walnut. Mama took the first game four to one, and Walnut were in the lead in game two, and then Mama stormed back to tie it, sent it to overtime, where team captain Mama team captain Tristan Lima came in and scored in the 119th minute. 119th minute, Ananda, to break Juana Hearts and send his team to another final. And then you had number two versus number three. Uh, man, this one this one uh, was nutty as well. Uh, Rhino won game one by a three to one score. And then in game two, uh, <clears throat> Atomic put on a defensive masterclass and got the shutout. Uh, Striker JoJo scored in the last the first half for that game's only goal of course after that it was the series was tied one to one and then atomic just splits rhino five to zero in the in the in the in game three it was one to zero at the end of the first half and then you got four goals in the second half uh jojo who who scored in in game two had the game's only goal uh and former mvp jacko vasaurus uh had a brace and a hat trick respectively and then we have a first finals appearance for, for Atomic in their debut season. Uh, that's wild. Uh, I started thinking about that. Of course, Ananda, you and I had our debut season in Niga G this year, too. And it, it's wild. You know, like, they're, they're an expansion team, too, man. They, they, made, they made the finals. So that's an incredibly big feat. Uh, congratulations to Atomic. They will now be playing Mamba, who will be going for the repeat. And a a record sixth crown. The red sace is on for Mamba as well. So it's going to be the the perennial winners, the perennial champions, the the current champions against the debutants atomic in the Liga G final. Um it's it's gonna be a big one, man. Do you do you have a, a, a dog in the fight in that one? Uh, I think I mentioned, well, my dog in the fight is out. I think I mentioned Rhino last time, but, uh, no, I, I, I mean, Mamba is a, a hell of a team. I think, I think they, they'll probably, I don't know. I would think, I think they're probably going to get the race to Ace, man. They're going to do it. Uh, they're, they're an extremely tough team, obviously. So, um, yeah, good luck to both teams. I mean, uh, may the best <clears throat> man or team win. <laughs> Uh, the finals are going to be on Sunday, April 7th for all those wanting to watch this. Start around 9. There's going to be three games. Uh, it's not an aggregate. It's just, you know, whoever wins the, the majority of the three games. And uh, they might have a surprise broadcast for, for the final as well uh, with some live commentary by some friends of Liga G. Uh, and Anna, we, we got to see if we can get into that. Um, and, and, you know, we, we can get some commentary going on as well um uh, you, you need to reach out to the commission on that one uh commission if you're out there say what's good um but anyway that's what's going on in the league of g world we are to the finals mama versus atomic congratulations to both those teams uh and then moving along to g's run LA's next event open to all walkers and runners of all levels that's going to be on april 13th at 9 a.m they're going to be running it back at the Rose Bowl, and then you have April 27th at Absolution Brewing, and then keeping it kind of like with, uh, you know, G's Run LA and, and you know, uh, adjacent events. One, two threads is, is throwing another seventh blue, white, and gold pop up. Well, it's the seventh edition. Uh, that'll be at Common Space LA on April 14th from 12 p.m. to 6 p.m. The full vendor list is out now. Um, so anybody that, uh, you know, wants to see who's going to be there, go ahead and check out the socials for one, two threads. They'll have it there. Um, and again, you, you, there's going to be plenty of galaxy gear, a lot of good food. So pull up to that as well. Uh, special shout out to miss yellow. One of the, I think one of the most creative people out there in the galaxy community, uh, her pop. Uh, is in the ICU. She she posted on social, so uh, sending her good vibes and sending her prayers as well. Um, and hopefully, you know her her Senor Padre uh, gets better really really quickly. And then you know she she's a a, 
one of the the artists like the main artists there in in Lars you know so we, we got to bring up uh LA Riot Squad's first Fridays that'll be happening tomorrow at 7 p.m. at the 6740 in Whittier all Galaxy fans are welcome so you have a lot of events leading up to El Tráfico uh, pull up to this one. I, uh, me and Ananda have been to a, a couple of First Fridays, and they're always a good time. They're always fun. So go ahead and, uh, you know, again, get together with your G's community. It's it's a big week, and uh, I'm, I'm sure if you do pull up, you'll have a great time. Um, we had a, a story um, a couple of pods ago, Ananda, and we, we kind of mentioned it off and on about the Dwayne Menace, right, and how... Sasha signed up to play for them, and then AJ was going to sign up to sign up to play for them. What happened? Uh, they they all signed up. There were several several ex MLS players and G's that lined up here. Sasha Klustian, Brian Rowe, AJ De La Garza, all ex G's were in this lineup. And of course, you had uh, M- MLS players Roger Espinosa and Tesho Akindele. Um, but despite them being in the lineup, the Cinderella story did end. They lost to the Union Omaha Owls, who were the 2022 Open Cup quarterfinalists. Three to one, and you know what? Um, as fun as it was, you know the Des Moines Menace are out. I wonder who else is going to sign for other amateur teams or, or something like that. If that's going to be like a thing now, um, of course, uh, keeping it on the U.S. Open Cup, Ventura County FC, aka Galaxy Two, or whatever you want to call them. I'm sure uh, Galaxy Comms would love to hear me call them Ventura County FC. So that's what I'll do. Uh, VCFC eliminated. Unfortunately, from the U.S. Open Cup with a 3-0 loss to Irvine Zeta FC, Nicolas Barros Escalotos, GBS's son, uh, got red carded in the 16th minute. Uh, after that, it was always going to be uh, a, a tough ask, right? You you get a, a man down for for that long in the match. So, uh, but congratulations to them for their participation, uh, and congratulations to VCFC coach Matt Taylor, who won the MLS Next Pro Coach of the Month. At, VCFC uh, won three of three in the league in the month. Uh, they are undefeated in the league, uh, and they'll play uh, Vancouver Whitecaps FC2 next on Sunday, April 7th at 5 p.m. Uh, I don't know if that one's free as well, but um, I'm sure Galaxy.com has more information about that. And uh, you know what? Another big thing that, that happened this week, Ananda, is the signing of El Parse. Carlos Emilio Garces, he is now official. The Galaxy have acquired the 2020, the 22-year-old Colombian defender. Uh, he was signed just a couple of days ago. Uh, he signed on loan from Deportivo Pereira, who he played for uh, 68 times. Uh, and then they signed him with a loan and an option to buy. Um, you know, we, we've talked about the center, the center back thing already. Uh, and so it's good that he's coming in because the, the Galaxy need a little bit more depth there. So it's good right. that he's coming in uh, to, to provide that depth. And then it's also good that Jalen Neal, who we love and we, we say is the truth because he is, was pictured back in training. And, and here it is. It's wonderful to see him back in training. Uh, this was awesome news. Ta- yeah, no, I know. This was taken awesome. on Wednesday, 4-3. Uh, so... Um, you know, Greg said that he is coming, probably coming in the next couple of weeks. Of course, he needs to get match fit and to get, you know, up to speed on everything. Um, but we can't wait to see him come back. I don't know if he's going to come back by Saturday, the 11th, Ananda, because on the 11th, it'll be Jalen Neal bobblehead night at the digs. And he's dressed like a, a rebel pilot from Star Wars here, um, which is super, super cool. Uh, so you know what? I'm I'm definitely gonna pick one of these bobbleheads up because I, I I need to have it. So, um, if you want to get your bobblehead, it's it's addable to your um. If you're a season ticket member, I'm not sure how it works for for non. But if you're a season ticket member, it's addable to your your cart, like in your offers when you go on your your Galaxy fan account. So, go ahead and and pick up one of those. I believe they're fifteen dollars. Um, and then finally, congratulations to. Dayan Jovalich, who was voted the Galaxy's um, first official player of the month. Uh, you know what? I'm not I'm not going to say they took inspiration from from defending the badge, but <laughs> but what? Do you... Anyways, well, yeah, we'll, I mean, we'll take we'll take that. 
but but you know what? Like I I love giving them stuff because you know what, Ricky Rocket, you know trademark. Uh, yeah, um, exactly. Ricky Razzle Dazzle, Ricky Rocket. They can't they can't take the prince who was promised. That's uh, shout out Black Galaxy fans. That that's all you, bud. So, uh, but yeah, but hey, I love uh, I love being able to make my contribution though. So, um, you know what? Any way any way I can help. So I actually voted for Mark. I saw the polls on this. I actually voted for Mark because again, he is the unsung hero. But I mean, you can't argue with five and six goals. I mean, what a record! I think Dayon's having a great year, and he needs to show up this weekend. So long may it continue. And congrats to Dayan Jovalich. Jovalich. <laughs> yeah, I was I was gonna wonder. Uh, I was wondering like if if you would get it because I still struggle with it. Um and and Decky, I'm just gonna call him Decky. I'm just gonna call him ah, Decky. There, yeah. there we go. Decky works. Decky, Decky, Decky works. Um. All right. Well, hopefully Decky balls out. Right. Yep. Um. That but he needs to. but you know what? Whether he balls out or not, uh, there's you know a lot of other intangibles in this match. A lot of other storylines going on, and here to help us get into it all. Please welcome to the show MLS and SBI soccer journalist, a man who has spent the past few years covering soccer in LA and doing a damn good job at it. Justin Ruderman, welcome to the show. How are you feeling, man? Wow, what an intro. Thank you guys for hey. having me on. Uh, it's it's great to be here, and I feel like I jumped on at the perfect time and you guys are discussing Jalen Neal. I feel like I'm as big a fan of him as anybody. So let's Ooh, let's jump right in, guys. Right on. Yeah, man. Uh, we call him the truth around here. So uh, that that's that's how much we that love him. I, 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 I. You know, I know he's he's a player like any other, and he will make his mistakes. It's, but you know what? It's it, I'm I'm kind of like the Jalen Neal slander police. Like I'm like, <laughs> whoa, whoa, what, what you saying about my boy there? But um, yeah, man. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for for being here. Uh, for those of you guys who who don't know or haven't read uh justin's stuff please uh right off top let us know where we can find you uh on the socials so so the folks can you know uh become acquainted with with your work yeah absolutely i appreciate it the best way to find me is just at justin ruderman underscore on twitter you can find probably all my links from there i do some uh stuff with my own upper 90 here as you can see on youtube but i also write of course for mlssoccer.com and sbi soccer as well so if you're more interested in the video content or the writing content i have both there for you go check it out hey yeah and, and it's good i was uh i was reading one of your articles the other day on the mls site and uh you had a you had a turn of phrase and then i got to the end and i was like oh this is justin's right on good stuff man um but you know you you mentioned x uh twitter uh, and and I know you know we we all play around there a lot, but this week has been particularly crazy with uh, El Trafico week. Uh, X has just been on another level of of tomfoolery. How have you enjoyed El Trafico week so far? Have have or have you not enjoyed it? Has it been stressful? Like, well, what what has it been like for you? Yeah, no, it, it certainly has been interesting, as you point out. The banter has gotten maybe a little bit out of hand, um, but. At the same time, you know, I, I like it in a sense in that it's starting to become, you know, a worldwide rivalry, right? You see the across right. all the world, whether it be in Europe, whether it be South America, these rivalries get heated. And while we all know that there's a line that should not be crossed, it's good to see the passion um, from both sides of these fan base. And I think it's certainly due to the success right now and the not so success of LAFC, but the success of Galaxy, right? Um I don't know if there's ever been a El Trafico where El Galaxy has gone in higher in the table than LAFC. And sure, it's no. early on, but there is a large gap between these two right now. Um, just the way that they're playing early on, and sure, that can change. You expect LAFC to pick things up. But yeah, Galaxy look great, and it's going to be uh, as exciting of a game as I think that we've gotten. And you know, these El Traficos, we expect so much. So uh, to, to kind of live up to those expectations is a lot, but I think this one will. Uh, Ananda mentioned, <clears throat> Ananda called them the, the sleeping giant at, at the top of the show, right? Uh, do you think that's accurate? I mean, do you think it, it's precisely this type of game that LAFC needs to kind of kind of wake up into their, their normal self? Yeah, well, I certainly think there's a point to be made there, right? Because we know that form doesn't matter when it comes to El Trafico. LAFC is usually the top team coming into these games and who has the better record coming out of them? Galaxy does, right? So I don't think necessarily that that form does matter. And obviously, as you say, it provides a great opportunity for LAFC to get back up on the horse, get back to winning ways um, and prove to themselves that they're not any different than last year, right? 
Um, but right now we have yet to see that, right? Last year it was kind of Boonga or bust all the way through, and he was so sensational that that worked out. But early on this season, you know, we haven't seen that it's any departure from that, right? He had a little bit of help with Carlos Vela last year. Carlos Vela is not there this year. Um, and so they have two wins, that first win coming against Seattle. You think, you know, okay, Seattle on opening day is a nice win, but then you see how bad Seattle have been playing and you think, well, maybe it was just because they were missing half their squad that day, right? And the other game that they go and win heavily against Nashville, right, was the game that Bowonga has a brace and an assist. So when he shows up, LAFC plays well. When he doesn't, the questions are still there. Um, you know, you you have some other pieces in there as well that have changed around. Uh, but yeah, we're still yet to see whether this is going to be the same team and whether Bowonga is going to have enough help. Obviously, that will change when Giroux uh, is expectedly coming in the summer. But until then, things need to be figured out for sure. Um, I learned something interesting about you today, uh, in that, that you are a, a Bay Area lad. Mm. Uh, so where, where, where in the Bay are you from? Born and raised in Oakland. Yeah, I was born hey, and raised there since the town, the town that is right. Uh, so I'm an Oakland roots guy. Um, but yeah, I, I went to UCLA. So I moved to LA when I was, you know, 18 to go to college and I've been here ever since. So I'm a, I'm a Bay have... transplant. Do you have a favorite um, Bay Area restaurant or, or maybe one <laughs> in San Francisco? Because, I, I mean, everyone, everyone knows I love my eats. So, like, mine's uh, Santung. Yeah, I, there's the Bay is, has a lot of great food, as does L.A. Oh. But I'm sure that one thing that we can both have in common is we all love tacos. And so if you're in the Bay, I will recommend you two tacos places, Tacos Sinaloa and Tacos El Gordo. Either one, you Ooh. cannot go wrong. Hey, um, well, me and Ananda do love a taco. We we go on taco tours sometimes with with our wives and go find tacos. So, um, well, uh, you you mentioned that you you came to LA uh, for for school, and then did you pick up uh, writing about soccer in in university? Were you doing it beforehand, or or like how did how did you start covering basically? Yeah, no, great question. It's uh, been an interesting journey for me because I was one of those kids who was, you know, an American soccer fan or American sports fan, excuse me. I didn't know much about soccer or American soccer even at that. Um, you know, my dad was a fan of all these American sports, um, but never cared for soccer. M meanwhile, I played soccer my whole life. So once I got to, you know, a teenager and I could kind of figure things out for myself, I started to uh, branch out into European soccer. I became a Manchester City fan due to my coach who was from Manchester at the time. Um, and then it kind of expanded from there. When I came to LA, um, I started to, yeah, kind of cover LAFC was originally the, the beginning for me because they kind of coincided when I came to LA. And then I started uh, working for Area Sports Network was my first uh, kind of delve into the writing field and that was i think my junior year of college started covering lafc um and did that and then i moved over to the striker uh moved over now of course to sbi and mls and go go league wide so yeah i've definitely been focusing on la but now it's good to to go league wide as well and kind of make that progression as we go along how, shout out don how, shout out don favi by the way yeah shout out yes, uh don absolutely favi and, and shout out uh, the striker as well. The, the yep. you know, um, couple friends of the show, El, El Profe, uh, Alex Reese, and then you you have Mike Gray, aka Miguel Reese. Uh, also, your your colleagues over there at the striker. So shout out to them. Uh, what, what's what's been? Um, I guess I wouldn't say challenge, but like how how has the transition been like from you know focusing on LA or LA soccer to, you know, jump into MLS and now you're kind of more of like a generalist. You're covering pretty much league wide. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's, it's fun. It's certainly a challenge though, because it, you have to know all 29 teams rather than just right. the two in LA. Right. And so it's easy to kind of know in depth one team or, or two teams, but to know in depth 29 teams is is a very difficult task and takes a lot of time and and effort and studying for sure. But it's a challenge that I enjoy. Um, and, it, you know, I think that that's kind of the way that things are going now. If you can go league wide, that's that's the best way to do it. I think that we need both sides, though. Right. Because there need to be uh, in depth team because I can't do, you know, what I what you guys will do for a single team right uh for for the league it's just impossible and and if you're a fan of the team you need kind of those fan oriented or, or team centric uh kind of content so I, I think it's great to have both and uh i like to be able to saddle the line of both of them as well uh if you had to guess right now 
because uh, as you mentioned, the Galaxy are, are going into the El Tráfico for the first time higher in the table. But the season is long, right? We only have a, a small sample size, right? But if you had to guess right now, if you had to call it right now, who ends up higher in the table from the LA teams? Wow. It's a great question. And I think it depends heavily on the, the impact of Giroud, how quickly he can kind of just rack up goals and, and wins for LAFC once he arrives. Um, I'm going to have to say Galaxy, though, at this point in time, because not only just the, the gap in quality in the table right now, but there hasn't been something from LAFC that has convinced me that they are going to be able to return to the top of the table, be one of the top three teams in the Western Conference this year. And Galaxy have certainly shown that they will be competing at the top. Um, whether they finish at the top or not certainly can be debated, but Galaxy have convinced me that they're going to compete at the top. LAFC haven't quite done that yet. So for me, it's got to be Galaxy at the moment. Ananda, what, yeah. what do you got? What do you got for Justin? Well, actually, I was going to ask you a question, Justin, but we have a, actually a really good question for both of you, Robert, since you're the one asking all the questions here all the time. Uh, but from especially from a media perspective, because I know you and I, Robert, have talked offline about this. Um, but here, Lopsang Ventura asks, what expectations do you guys have for soccer growing up after the World Cup, basically just exploding in this country? I know, again, Robert, you and I have talked offline about this in terms of from a media perspective, just like obviously we have Messi coming in and now we've got two huge tournaments, Copa America this summer and then the World Cup. So, I mean, yeah, go go ahead, guys. How do you, how do you guys see the explosion of, of this sport in this country, especially after 2026? I'll let our uh, illustrious guests go ahead and lead off. Yeah, I'm, it, the expectations, I mean, where do you set them is kind of the question for me. Yeah. Put them sky high, right? There's no reason. Put them as high as they should go. Get as many people as you can possibly imagine into this sport while it can be done. And I think, you know, the Copa America is going to be huge as well because it is kind of, you know, that stepping stone into the World Cup. It's like, you know, hey, look, everybody, there's a huge tournament in America. And, you know, if you are enjoying soccer, maybe you'll enjoy this. If you like sports, maybe you'll have a good time here. And then if they like that, they get the big one in the World Cup. And then hopefully you got the back end of that with the 2027 Women's World Cup, which hopefully mm. will be awarded to the United States. And if so, that kind of can be the uh, finisher, right? It, for people who get into the World Cup with the Men's World Cup in 2026. And we know that in America, we love the women's team as well. And so you you get into it and you say, well, I, I still love this. I want more. It can keep people engaged that next year uh, and, and for their you know long-term futures, I think. Um, that's kind of the hope from my perspective. But Rob, please add on. Yeah, you guys have mentioned already all, all these great tournaments that, that are going to be happening here. Um, you know, Copa America this year, then next year, the Club World Cup. I mean, uh, Justin, your team will be here. City will be here. Uh, Real Madrid will be here. Some of the powerhouses from, from Sud America will be here. Boca, River, uh, Corinthians, I mean, La, La Flu. Uh, you know, so you'll have huge tournaments happening here. And then, you know, the World Cup. And then hopefully the Women's World Cup. And then just after that, you have the Olympics in L.A. in 2028. So you'll have soccer then. I mean, it's the sky's the limit, like like Justin said. Like, why why put it? Why put a, even a, a, a quantifier on it? I mean, there's just yeah. like no end to what could happen, especially if you have a competitive U.S. team in the, uh, the, in the 2026 World Cup. And you know what? Like, not, not, even them winning, but them capturing the, the heart's imagination of the country with with good play, with inspired play. Yeah. I mean, you're going to be have you're you're going to have children instead of you know picking up a basketball because they they love LeBron. They're going to be kicking around a soccer ball because they they saw a Pulisic score a a a worldy. You know, just the same way that a generation ago, a lot of people became soccer fans because they saw Landon Donovan strike against Algeria, you know? So it, it's not only going to be transformational for the, the sport and its growth here, but we're going to get a lot of good soccer to watch here. Um, and I think it's going to open the door to a lot of good players coming here too, because, you know, you're going to have players from, like I said, city, real Madrid, um, you know, all, all these other great teams from Europe. They're going to see, Oh, wow. LA is really cool or New York's awesome, you know, like maybe I can go play there. So I think it's going to open the door everywhere. I mean, not just from a sporting perspective, but from like a, a 
sporting uh perspective like it on a global scale like in sport itself and then marketing and then just man i i'm excited uh we, we yeah. can go all day on this one um sure. and yeah, yeah great question, really good question way. yeah really good yeah question. yeah um but we do have another trafico to get through so let's bring them back there um let's let's talk about where these two teams are in the standings really quick um through six matches played in 2024, the LA Galaxy hold an unbeaten record of 3-0-3. and They're on 12 points. Uh, they got to those 12 points nine games faster than in 2023. Of course, uh, Josh from Corner of the Galaxy gives us that stat right there. They're first in the West and first in the Supporter Shield. The only unbeaten team remaining in the West and only one of three in the league still. And it's the sixth best start in the team's 29-year history. And then I'm going to go ahead and break down some LAFC stats, and then uh, we're going to go ahead and, and hone in on uh, Justin with, with some questions here. So through those same six games, uh, LAFC has a 2-1-3 and three record. They're on seven points. Uh, they're in ninth place. Their best win of the season, that 5-0 against Nashville, which uh, Justin mentioned that that Denny Buonga had a, a brace and an assist. Their last match, though, is is kind of where where you, know, you, you start to see this team not really be the the team that you know the league is recognizes them as they had a three two loss to Colorado they were up two to one in the eighty third minute uh, new signing David Martinez had a lovely solo goal I mean just the footwork was was really really impressive only for Jordi Mihaljevic to turn it all around basically uh, by himself he scored a lovely free kick in the eighty third minute uh, for, first off we're gonna, we're gonna leave it there Mihaljevic ties it up for you. Can Ugo Yordi still better on this one? Justin? Sorry, what was the question? Can uh, when when Mihailovic ties it up on the free kick? Yeah. Can Ugo Yordi do better on this one? Like, do mm. you think he he should be stopping this? Uh, he he goes. He doesn't go far post. He goes near post. Oh, yeah. sorry. He goes far post. No, he right? goes far post. He goes far post. Yeah. 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 Right. So, you know, theoretically. Yuri has like an easier chance to get it. So yeah, question. Should he have done better on this one? For me, no. I don't blame him. I think it's it's a extremely well taken free kick. He's so close um that he he's just put it there and Yuri is is late sighted, right? He can't see it um until it's past the wall. It's basically like, you know, a foot or two in front of him. He can barely react in time. For me, it's it's not uh on him at all, but he he's been great for me early on this season. Um, his distribution has been stellar, even though it hasn't been up to his own expectations, which tells you just how um, highly he expects of himself. But no, I, I wouldn't put that goal on him. OK, uh, we're we're going to take a, a question from the chat right now. We're only going to take half of it, though, because we're going to keep it nice, guys. Uh, you know what? We're, we're going to be respectful, respectful rivals. And, and also remember that that Justin is an impartial journalist. So, Justin, what was your favorite Trafico game? Oh, that is a great question. There's so many to choose from. I mean, do you choose the Zlatan game? Do you choose the playoff games? Do you choose the Open Cup game? Yeah, it, it's a tough one. I think, you know, if between for, for me, it's between the Zlatan game and and uh, the the playoff game that LAFC won at BMO, the first, you know, game that they won against Galaxy. I think it depends on your perspective whether you're... Uh, yeah, yeah, right. Exactly. Sending sending Zlatan home, ironically. Right. Um, so e either side of that, whether you're the side that loves Zlatan in the galaxy or hates Zlatan in the galaxy, um, I would pick probably one of those two because they were absolutely yeah, incredible uh, goals, uh, incredible games for sure. Um, the, the best goal in El Trafico, I can absolutely tell you, was not Zlatan, though. It was Brian Rodriguez um, in I believe it was like a 3-3 draw that game. It was a midday game. Um, I remember league regular league game, but he just weaved in and out of players. And I, I just that goal has always stuck in my mind forever as as the best El Trafico goal. Huh, mm -hmm. in, interesting, because my my favorite is isn't the Zlatan isn't the Zlatan either. Right. It's uh, Sebastian Leggett. Uh He scored like this scissor kick. I don't know. When, kick, I think. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, I don't remember in which El Trafico it was. It was one of the the earlier ones, but just like this cat comes out of nowhere with with that scissor kick, and I'm just like, okay, go on with yourself, Sebastian. Right on. Um, what about you, Ananda? Do you, do you have a favorite? 
Uh, it's got to be Zlatan, man. Uh, let's not overthink this. It, it's Zlatan, uh, hands down. Pro I mean, I've seen like a lot of, especially Galaxy fans, of course. Uh, they they said that that's the best sort of sporting moment they've seen live uh, for a it lot of them. And 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 yeah, I wish I was there, man. I was not there, but yeah, it, it's got to be that. It's got to be that. Well, apparently, Justin, Alex, or we shout out Alex, you're in the chat. Says that the Hello, best profit. game are the are the ones that you guys have been at together so there you go oh uh, <laughs> love watching a game with alex absolutely <laughs> mr stats man and El yeah, Profe uh, himself so yeah and unfortunately he won't be there with us at bmo because he'll be doing a live show at uh the digs with corner of the galaxy so you and i will get to hang out but no alex and we're gonna miss you yeah, Alex, uh, El Profe, it's not the same without you. Um, so anyway, we'll, we'll get back to this this 3-2 um, that LAFC dropped against Colorado. There, It's it's 2-2. Two, two. Justin's opinion is that, that Yuri doesn't see it. Um, you know what? Uh, but then we have the goal scorer, Martinez. He gets sent off for a second yellow at 2-2, at, at two, two, uh, which means that he'll miss El Trafico. And that's kind of a shame because I've, I've seen him play quite a bit uh for venezuela and and yeah the kid balls so it, it would have been great to see him um so he gets sent off in the final moments of this match and then lafc is playing the the last couple minutes a man down and then that man comes through again with the game winner mihailovic scores with his thigh uh not even a not even a clean strike just with, with his thigh just kind of like gets a, a thigh on it and colorado gets all three points justin what went wrong in this match it's, it's a good question because I think that a lot of people will have different opinions on what were wrong. Was it tired legs in Colorado with the altitude? You know, Steve Trendolo said that certainly affected him, uh, affected his team, but he blamed it on beating themselves. He said that LA, LAFC beat themselves that game, which um, can certainly be said, right? I mean, you give away the free kick at the top of the box. You give away these unnecessary uh, set piece opportunities. You don't really defend a, a corner kick very well at all. Um, you give away kind of simple goals, right? When you look at them in isolation. Uh, and so you can see why he says that as well. But, you know, at the same time, it's like you got to be able to close out games, right? If Martinez doesn't get sent off, how does that game, how does that change the way that uh, the game finishes? And it was a, a very silly second yellow card, uh, silly first one honestly as well but the second one was just ridiculous kicking the ball away and now you get yourself sent off sent your your team down to 10 men um so i think that you could kind of blame it on a few different things there but i think it's probably in reality the combination um of of the different things including you know beating yourself and and uh the fitness and the altitude and whatnot but yeah it's certainly not a game that you expect lafc to lose against a colorado team when they're up 2-1 late in the game uh, but it's it's a great point you bring up with Martinez as well, because him missing this game is is going to be big. I mean, a lot of LAFC fans have been calling for him to become a starter over Kike Oliveira on that uh, wing because Oliveira hasn't been able to put the ball in the back of the net uh, very often. And, and you know, Martinez has looked sensational in his time. Um, so it's, it's a big loss, I think, for LAFC, especially who are, you know, not a very deep team at all right now. I mean, you look at the two teams and you say Galaxy are the deeper team. And that tells you, right, how big of a problem it is for LAFC at the moment. So, yeah, it's going to be a big loss, I think, without him in El Trafico, whether he would have started, I don't think. But off the bench, he, he's been fantastic and a very danger uh, to, to, you know, find a winning goal and equalizer, these type things that you might need in an El Trafico where they don't have uh, that type of player on the bench anymore. Well, and it's interesting too, right, guys? It highlights just that gaping hole on that right-hand side that, ironically, the elephant in the room, Carlos Vela, right? Like, it's it's interesting how big of a miss he's been. I, I mean, it's I've been surprised at just sort of uh, just where that saga is at. Like, it's been completely radio silent and there's been no communication, but he's a big miss and that's a huge miss for that team. So, um, yeah, I mean, it, it's a very that's a very interesting situation for me as an outsider looking in. Uh, that Bella Justin, situation. does that get done? I've always thought it will get done. I will stay in that camp until I have reason to believe otherwise. Um, but it is weird. I mean, why is he just still not playing? Why has there still not been anything done? Yeah. I mean, the reason that I, uh, you know, have been told have been 
you know, thought was the reason this whole time was they were waiting kind of until all the other moves were done so they could offer him that final number of, you know, this is how much we can give you. I've always thought, you know, they weren't going to give him that DP slot. So it was Tam or, you know, that that DP that can be bought down type of thing. Um, but, it, but it was, you know, LFC was signing players throughout this offseason. They had to figure out how their cap uh, worked and how Vela could fit into that. Uh, and I think, you know, it's weird now because you would think that they would have figured out, you know, how much they could offer him by now and for Vela to not have uh, an accepted an offer. And then you hear, you know, San Jose Earthquakes offered him a DP contract and that didn't come to fruition at all. Um, I I know that he wants to stay in L.A. I know he doesn't want to go to Mexico. Um, he probably, you know, showing he doesn't want to go to San Jose either. So I still think it probably gets done at some point. But why hasn't it been done yet? I, I can't tell you. Yeah, when I was up in San Jose last month, I believe, or just a couple of weeks ago, the only feeling was that that Vela to uh, San Jose was was going to get done. Like the the feeling around the, the stadium was like, oh, he's coming, he's coming, right? Um, and then, like you said, it just didn't happen. I mean, uh, I mean, the bunch of people uh, reported on that the contract was extended, and you know what? It's got to be a clear signal that, like, like you said, he doesn't want to go to Mexico or, or San Jose. He wants to stay where he's at. Um, and like Anand said, that's kind of the 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 gaping hole right there, you know, because as as you know, uh, as not a great of a season that he had as he had last year. I mean, he will still turn up with these moments of quality, uh, and and you know what that he's he's a quality player it, it is what it is right uh galaxy fans in the chat crucify me if you want um but you know what you just gotta call a spade a spade uh you know and he's he's a good player so you know what for for you uh you mentioned that martinez was was kind of like getting the call or like getting you know people were clamoring for him for him starting uh do you think he'll if 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 godless doesn't come back do you think he'll eventually end up taking that that right hand spot making it his yeah I, I think it's a very likely uh situation i think it depends just on who can find their finishing boots uh quicker i think martinez has, has shown that he has no problem with it he's just so dangerous in, in every movement and i think kike Oliveira is also a very very dangerous player but he's just been kind of in that brian rodriguez the baby camp where the, the finishing product just isn't there, even though they look really good in a lot of moments. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, Steve Shrundalo will continue to back Kike Oliveira and say that the finishing product will come. It it will just be patient about it. Um, but if you have a player in the David Martinez who is producing that end product, then I think at some point you have to certainly start him. But yeah, when it comes to Carlos Vela, specifically in El Trafico, I think we should also mention because not only is he the highest scoring player in El Trafico, I believe, uh, and as assuming the stat hasn't changed since last season, that you know he has scored the most goal against a single team since he's entered the league of any player against a single team against the Galaxy. He just pours that's in goals against the Galaxy. So it's like 12, right? Or something like that. Some something ridiculous like that. Yeah, I'm not sure the exact number, but it sounds right. Um, it, it just he, he continues to do it. Uh, he had, you know, had a brace last year at DHSP. So um, it, it is a big loss, not just for the season, but specifically for this game. Definitely. Uh, we have a fact check in the chat um, by our, our dear Matthew uh, at Comets 96. Uh, the first El Trafico in 2021, we, uh, as in the Galaxy, were above LAFC in the table. Also, them, we both missed the playoffs, though, he says. So that, that, that tracks. I love that memory. Well. I love that memory. Yeah. That's that's me. I'm always like, I think this happened, but I'm not sure there might be an exception. Appreciate well, that. Well, well, once. Once. Um, but you know what? Uh, you kind of answer. I, I was going to ask you this later. You kind of answered it already. But, you know, like the form doesn't really matter in in this match uh these these teams just go at it all the time and the galaxy has been at a historical low at at points during you know el trafico matches and then they've just come up with a win or an incredible tie out of nowhere so uh you know what it, it has happened but speaking of the of those stats you know uh th this record you know when they've been down uh this is the 22nd edition this game is happening on April 6th. Kickoff is, uh, that one says 445, but uh, I, I read somewhere that kickoff was at 455. But just in case, go ahead and, and be in your seats. Be wherever you need to be at 445 so you're not uh, behind by 10 minutes. The Galaxy lead the all-time series, 975. 
Uh, they're seven five five. They lead the the series in league play and four meetings across all competitions last year. The series was the tie. Uh, Galaxy took two games. LAFC two, took two games. And 10 all-time road matches played against LAFC at BMO Stadium. The Galaxy hold a 2-5-3 and three record. And then, as I think Justin mentioned, last away game was that 4-2 to two LAFC win. Um, so this is where these two teams are going into this match. Now let's, let's look at a couple of players as well. Um, Greg said in the press conference today um, that Martin Cáceres is very questionable for this match, and uh, it doesn't. If he doesn't play this weekend, they'll be he'll be back next week versus Vancouver Whitecaps. Uh, he did say that uh, Martin had a scan that it showed very little, but of course uh, LAFC is a, a, a high uh, a high transition team that's that's quick that's fast and so you know it's it's probably not the the best game to have martin in if you know he does have even just a a, a questionable injury injury right but Dayon is good to go he confirmed uh he had that groin concern last week that kept him out of the strong lineup uh, when he came in, when he could uh, achieve the record but he was brought off the bench uh, but he'll be ready for this El Trafico match against LAFC uh, so that's kind of where the the injuries stand for the the Galaxy uh, Justin do LAFC have any significant injuries um, besides uh, Omar Campos and De La Valle yeah well Com- Campos is the interesting one um, because he came back from Mexico U23s I guess with some kind of injury he didn't play the last game um we haven't had the media yet for LAFC that will be tomorrow. So hopefully we'll find out some more information specifically on Campos. But to me, he, I would say he's a 50, 50. I'm not really sure um, whether he'll be able to go. Uh, if not, it will be Palencia in his spot with uh, Hollingshead flipping to the other side. So yeah, it, it should be interesting. He's a very good attacking player, but definitely has his uh, defensive frailties. So yeah, that, that's the interesting one. De La Valle is out for the year. Yeah, so a big loss, obviously, there. But um, that's one that they've been handling it and dealt with. So you, you kind of mentioned um, where Hollingshead was going to play. Uh, do you have a, a predicted starting lineup for LAFC in this one? And then uh, Ananda, we'll, we'll ask you the same question. But for the Galaxy. Yeah, I think uh, the only question that I have for LAFC is, is simply that Campos uh, versus Palencia if Campos is ready to go, he starts. If he's not fit, Palencia will start with Palencia on that right, as you see in this graphic, and Hollingshead on the left. If Campos starts, Campos will be on the left. Hollingshead will be on the right. Um, otherwise, I expect the same uh, other 10 players because that's what Steve Trindle hasn't veered off that. This entire uh, you know first few games of the season, what is it, six games now, seven games? So he has started the same lineup bar that Campos change. Uh, because partly he doesn't have that depth to change it around, but partly there hasn't been a need uh, for rotation because LAFC is not in uh, CONCACAF Champions Cup or other things that they need to rotate for. So he's just been continuing with the same starting 11. I asked him that question specifically a few weeks ago, and and those are the answers he gave me. So I think, uh, yeah, it should be the same uh, starting 11. Nothing really uh, should be out of the ordinary for LAFC there. Speaking of... You're gonna hit the um, LAFC press availability tomorrow. Yes, tomorrow will be uh, the LAFC press availability at about noon. Awesome. So you guys know where to get your uh, updates on what could be going down in the LAFC camp before this El Tráfico uh, in terms of uh, injuries. Who's going to be available? Uh, like like I said. Go ahead and hit up Justin's socials for for that uh, to stay abreast of that situation. Uh, Anandita Kirana, El Gitano Perdido, uh, the Simia, Papa. What's up with your starting lineup for the LA Galaxy? Is uh, Greg gonna keep it unchanged or? Uh... Yeah, I, I think it's gonna be pretty simple, Rob. What? I what? think I think one is uh, one is a force changed. Uh, obviously, we talked about Martin, so I think Martin will come out for for nephew for Eric Zavaleta. He's gonna be in there. Uh, he is our only other option at center back right now. We just signed Carlos Garces, but of course he's not going to be ready. 
Uh, I don't even know when he's coming into the team, Robert. I, I don't. I'm not aware of that situation at all. But it's. It, I think I heard from. Greg said a couple of weeks as well. A couple of weeks, right? Yeah. So it, it, that's not going to be for a while. So we're going to need to play him in there. Uh, I think smart move, by the way, by Vanny. Um, you know, Martinez is, is is 37. He is not uh, a young buck anymore. So we do need to keep him under wraps. If you if we want him to be fit for the whole season, I think he's going to be an important part of the team. And then the other is uh, hopefully welcoming back Deki, uh, Daniel Valich, who is going to come back to that starting 11 from what I'm hearing, again, based off the pressers today. So he will come in for Miguel Berry, but the rest of the lineup will stay unchanged. Uh, Rob, I, I didn't know this, but heard, hearing from the pressers today, Greg did talk about a little sort of knock or problem for Serio. Uh, which is why Gaston got the 90 minutes, or sorry, got the most of the game last time. He got 60, 60 some odd minutes. Uh, so, but I, again, tactically, especially against an LAFC, who is a high pressing sort of transition team, we do need that cover protection for the back four. And Gaston does a does a stellar job a, as the number six. So I, I would prefer him tactically, anyways, over a Serio. Yeah, I, I don't see much wrong with that that starting lineup uh, for for the Galaxy. Yeah, that's pretty much the way I would go as well. Um, and it, I mean, the, the numbers don't lie, Ananda. Uh, and and you know what, you're you're the stats guy, so break us off with with some with some stats before we go into this El Trafico here. Yeah, uh, so I pulled up a couple. It's these same stats that we always pull up, but when we compare both teams, it's really, really interesting because they're both elite offensively, right? Uh, so if you look at expected goals, uh, LA Galaxy, and these are per fought mob, LA Galaxy is at 12.2 expected goals, and LAFC is right behind them at 11.2. The, the difference is, guys, LA Galaxy has 13 goals a season, so they're overperforming by about a goal. And LAFC are at 11.2, and uh, they 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 have nine goals this season, so they're underperforming, and that's really been the dif the big difference is just clinical finishing, and you see that in the big chances as well. Uh, LA Galaxy is tied with Inter Miami at number one with 24 big chances created. LAFC again right behind them in 21, but LAFC has missed three more big chances than the LA Galaxy. Uh, by the way, guys, I just want to remind you too, especially Rob, like. Galaxy, remember, Rob, we've missed two penalties this year and we've hit the woodwork seven times, right? Uh, so we've been majorly unlucky as well, but we have been overperforming slightly, which is a really, really good sign. Now, let's not forget, though, that LAFC has also had some bad luck. They've also hit the hit the woodwork. They've hit the woodwork nine times this season, uh, but they but they did convert their penalty. Uh, so just really, really interesting because. You know, I when I, I I'm seeing sort of like when I see the chatter around LAFC, I hear things like, you know, they're not creating as many chances or they're not as potent. I mean, the numbers show that they're a pretty potent offensive team still. I think it's just about like Justin mentioned earlier, getting Denny Mwanga on track. Uh, you know, when he's on, the team usually wins when he doesn't show up. The team usually doesn't. So it's kind of those little marginal things, I believe. But the stats are the underlying stats, at least, are showing that. Both teams are a powerhouse offensively for sure. Mm, yeah, and then the the stats also support that because the El Trafico averages four point three goals a game, so there there most likely will be a bunch of goals in this one, guys. Uh, Justin, we we've spoken about um, you know Denny Boanga a lot, but I'd I'd like to know who is the expert for LAFC. Like who is the guy who needs to perform well? for LAFC to have success on the day? I will pick Edward Atuesta. And it's it's one because, look, they could still lose the game if he plays well because it's very rare that Edward Atuesta doesn't play well, but he is so key to this team uh, in just tra not only transition, but just controlling that middle of the park. I mean, he is such an incredible player when he, you know, left LAFC, he was an MLS best 11 player. Um, it didn't necessarily work out for him in Brazil. And now he's back. I think that he is a significant upgrade on Kellen Acosta. Um, and, and to me, he is one of the more entertaining players in the entire league to watch. He is so technically sound. He's always making the right decision. His vision uh, is fantastic, but he is really, to me, that perfect number eight. He can do everything on both sides of the ball. Um, and when he's on, he can really change the game and, and tilt kind of the field in LAFC's favor. So that is is the one that 
I would definitely focus on um, uh, just as a single player. But storyline, I, I love that woodwork one as well because, yeah, LFC has hit the woodwork more than any team in the league, led, of course, by Bowonga, but Galaxy is right there as well, hitting the woodwork a bunch. Um, and that is just because, yeah, as you mentioned, not only they hit the woodwork a lot, but they're really uh, potent offensive teams that can create a, a lot. And uh, both, uh, specifically with uh, Galaxy, we've seen, you know, they both score and concede a lot of goals, uh, leading to a uh, very entertaining game. So I wouldn't expect anything different in El Trafico. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, do you have a, a an X factor or danger man to watch for the Galaxy, Justin? I mean, is it is it a cop out to pick Paintsill? I I feel like I have to talk about him because I haven't said anything yet. And this guy, to me, is uh, the signing of the season. Not only, but but just. I don't even know where to start with him because when he came to the league, when, when they first, and I believe it was you who broke the news, right? That there was talks with Joseph Payne. So when I first saw that tweet of yours, I was blown away because, and I've told others this, the comparison that I will give, and it's not a positional comparison necessarily or the way that they play, but it was a feeling that I got was Cucho Hernandez because the same feeling that I got when I saw Cucho Hernandez was linked to MLS was the same feeling I got with Joseph Payne. which was, why are they coming to MLS? I thought this guy was going to the Premier League, and now some MLS team is going to be able to coup them. And as you guys talked about, it is because of Will Koontz and the ability that he has had to kind of turn this team on its head um, and turn the salary or a cap around and all of these things. Yeah, he, he, it's an incredible signing. He continues to uh, show why on the pitch. But yeah, an incredible coup by Will Koontz. Uh, I don't think that there can be enough praise heaped on Joseph Paintsill. And when he performs, that's going to uh, push the galaxy forward for sure. And he makes great songs as well. Uh, yes, that, that, too. <laughs> that, that we vibe to for sure. Uh, Ananda, um, do you have one for, for LAFC to watch and then a, a danger man or an X factor for, for the galaxy? Uh, so danger man uh, for L for galaxy or LAFC? Uh, give me one. Give me one for each. Uh, well, I'm going to re sort of reframe the question a little bit, Robert, but I'll, I'll hit on your point, which is I'm okay. actually looking at two, I'm actually like looking at two key battles. I'm, I'm looking at two key battles in this game, and that is uh, and they're both on the same side. So I'm going to looking at Denny Buwanga versus Miki Yamane and Gabriel Peck versus Ryan Hollingshead. If, as Justin mentioned earlier, Hollingshead is going to start on the left hand side. I think that's, those are two key battles. Uh, we know that on our end, Boanga likes to run down the throat on that left-hand side. Miki Yamane is going to have an absolute handful. So I think, Robert, if if my instinct is correct and Greg Van is going to play inverted, so a left footer on that right wing, so Gabriel Peck, I think them two together are going to – it's going to be interesting how they deal with Boanga, the threat – of him on the counter you know we've seen last game robert that peck has incredible stamina he has a willingness to work but tactically i think greg's still working on him about defensive positioning when to go inside when to stay outside those little marginal things so i think that's going to be a really interesting one to watch and man i don't know what it is but uh hollings head just gives us a game every single time we play el trafico i i remember robert he scored that outside the foot shot with his left foot that jonathan bond should have done way better on but that's besides the point uh he always shows up for la galaxy uh, or for uh, against the la galaxy excuse me so i that again you know it's going to be interesting to see ken peck sort of run at him one-on-one -on -one and we'll see how he because peck is an incredible dib dribbler he's shown us flashes he's got that brazilian flair about him so that's a really interesting one to see as well so i'm really interested to see those two battles on that on that side man it's going to be really interesting to see how both teams handle the threat going the other way i, I would that's, actually that's add um on onto that point about ryan hollingshead i think it's a, a very good one with gabrielle peck because Hollingshead is a player that, as you mentioned, likes to get forward. He likes to contribute to the attack, but he is also, you know, very solid defensively. And he kind of picks his moments in a very uh, impressive way. That's always been kind of his knack is picking that right moment to bomb forward and finding this run into the box where he can, you know, finish off a chance or whatever. But can Gabriel Peck continue to pin him back? in the LAFC half. Can Gabriel Peck push him uh, and continue to not let him get out of, <clears throat> excuse me, get out of his defensive half and, and get at Galaxy? So I think that will be certainly a big challenge for Peck and uh, a big job for him on the day. Yeah. 
Um, it's interesting you guys you guys focused on on the, the wing battles, right? Um, because for me, this game is won and lost in midfield. I mean, the Galaxy have an elite midfield. Uh, LFC has very very good midfielders as well. Um, you know, Elias Sanchez was was courted heavily by the Galaxy and was just a far away from being done before he went to LAFC, right? So that's you know, uh, an, another good player to talk about right there. But then you have, you know, Twesta, who Justin kind of pointed out was was his X factor for LAFC. Um, that that would have been my first. Then you have uh, Tillman as well. So that midfield battle is going to be interesting because you have two very, very good midfields going up against each other. Um, and so I, I really think whoever wins the midfield wins the game, personally. Um, but you know what? Uh, so far, the Galaxy's midfield has has kind of won the 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 day at least in the standings right now. Um, and then uh, also in the MLS rankings, uh, heck, do you think a loss will be more hurtful to the Galaxy or LAFC? I actually had that question all prepped up for Justin, but we'll get to it now. Who needs who needs to win this game more, Justin? LAFC or the Galaxy? Do the Galaxy need to win more to keep their momentum, to solidify their credentials for, for being quote-unquote back, or does LAFC need to win this game more to get back on track uh, to be the LAFC that the league knows? It's a really good question. Um, I think my true answer would be that I don't think either team needs it as much as maybe people would think. Uh, because I think, you know, Galaxy have shown that that they have different ability to win in, in all types of different ways, right? They can come back and beat you. They can score a bunch of goals or they can win one nil and kind of lock down the back as they did against Seattle, which, you know, we hadn't seen the entirety of last year. So I think that Galaxy have shown that. So if they go in and lose at BMO Stadium, is that really, uh, you know, derailing their season? Or are we having major question marks after that? Absolutely not. On the other side of things, LAFC have not had a good start to the season, right? They're not in good form. Um, they they have their own depth issues. Martinez suspended, etc. cetera. Uh, if Campos is out, whatever. If they lose the game, does that mean that their season is, you know, unrecoverable? I don't think so at all. But I would say that it's a little bit more important on that side for LAFC to get that win to jumpstart their season because an El Trafico win can certainly give you that energy, that boost going forward, where I think... Um, you know, if Galaxy lose the game, they just kind of move on from it and they, you know, hop over it and say, well, it, it is what it is. We move on. We've had a great start to the season. Um, obviously, it would be even more incredible for them to win it and keep the season going. Uh, but yeah, I think slightly more important for LAFC, but not necessarily as important as anybody would think for either, either of them, to be honest. Yeah, I, well, you well, know, I was, was going to say... Galaxy gonna ranked. Say, oh, sorry, Robert. I was going to say... Um, you know, I think because uh, we were looking at the loss column for a second, but I think the, a Galaxy win would be huge. You know, one of the things that I I, I thought of and I sort of wrote down was, um, uh, and and again, just kind of looking back and and stealing C Miles's dictionary a little bit, Robert. Uh, a galaxy win could represent the start of a paradigm shift around this idea of who's the best team in LA, right? The the battle of LA essentially. Uh, it's not gonna it's not gonna mean that we're back. It's not gonna mean that you know the sleeping giant has awoken. But I think it's gonna start like spinning the wheels on a narrative that you know the galaxy I think are rising back to prominence, and this would be a huge statement win for the galaxy. Is I, I think it's going to happen. Well, let's go into predictions in, in a little bit. But um, I think that I think a win at BMO would be a huge statement when I think more so for the Galaxy, maybe a little less so for LAFC, in my opinion. Uh, really quickly, thank you to Moises, who uh, is is uh, apparently uh, auditioning for chief like chief officer, like officer. Uh, <laughs> chief like chief like officer uh, by reminding you to get those likes up uh, as well. If you haven't yet, go ahead and subscribe to this, this humble pod. So you guys, we have incredible like Justin on who is breaking down LAFC for us. Uh, guys, this is probably uh, at the very least, if not, you know, the first time that the Galaxy have been higher in the rankings. Definitely the, the power rankings, the MLS power rankings. Galaxy are in third right now, whereas LAFC's in 13th. Uh, before we get to predictions, uh, chat, you can start dropping them right now in, in, in the, uh, you know, let us know what you think. 
who's going to win this game. But before we get there, Ananda has some betting odds, uh, courtesy of the wonderful city of Las Vegas. Uh, <laughs> bet responsibly. Yes, please bet responsibly. So here are your betting odds per sofa score. So LAFC is at a minus 137. So that's 58%. Uh, LA Galaxy, it has a plus 320. Wow, plus 320 at 24%. That is, uh, yeah, they're not giving, the bookies are not giving us uh, much of a shot at all. So guys, if you want to place your bets, please bet responsibly. But Again, uh, as I said, uh, you know, Galaxy wouldn't be a huge statement to win and because the bookies aren't even giving us a look in. So, yeah, that's where we're at, boys. I'm no betting Tony, man, but those odds for Galaxy look great. Yeah. So, by the oh, way, yeah, yeah. If, if you beat those odds, you're, you're coming up. Um, Tony, who we, we met at the York a couple weeks ago, uh, yeah. has has this to say. Galaxy win is more important being the LAFC was an um, LS Cup finalists also have much more to prove this season. I think that kind of, uh, you know, piggybacks off what you said, Ananda. Like, I think, you know, it, it's important for the narrative, for the the paradigm shift, quote unquote, for the Galaxy to get that win. Um, you know, so, uh, Justin, you, you're going to chime yes, in. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, I, I would challenge that, actually, because <clears throat> I think that. First of all, I mean, the question is, has that shift not already started early in the season? Are we not already asking those questions? I mean, you guys asked me early on who's going to finish higher in the table, and my answer was Galaxy, right? So right. I think those questions are already starting to be asked. And more importantly, I don't think that an El Trafico win answers those questions. Galaxy, as we have discussed, have great record in El Trafico, even mm -hmm. when they're not the better team, right? That doesn't necessarily answer those questions for me. I think those questions are answered over the course of a season, over the course of the table and who can finish higher and, you know, who can show us that they're the better team um, over the entire season. So, yeah, I'm not sure that I agree with with uh, that changing the narrative so much. Interesting. I think I think there's I think there's uh and this is this is funny and we we've, we've already seen this kind of on on X or Twitter uh or or like the zeitgeist out there. Um, I think you know there's the the battle on the pitch and then the the battle like the psychological battle, right? Um no, uh, it doesn't derail either team's season if they they go out there and and they lose, right? Um but it is a big psychological boost to both these teams right so lafc gets the win like you said they they jump start their season uh galaxy gets gets the win they kind of cement those those bona fides there right and and it's i think that's or if, if i'm interpreting correctly uh the galaxy has been down so bad over the past couple of years that i think what tony's trying to say is that they have more to prove because lafc has been a lot better in in terms of play and in terms of being yeah. in the standings so in terms of like you know hey is it a fluke? like the galaxy got to go out there and prove like no our play hasn't been a fluke uh you know like we we can get these kinds of wins kind of like they they got the win against skc which you know they hadn't beat since 2019 they they get the shutout win against seattle which they have beat since 2018 those mental battles against themselves right that that are psychologically boosting i think is is also ties into it uh but again i that's just kind of how i interpret it uh tony you could you could tell me if, if i'm right or wrong but uh may, maybe i'm off base here um but now we get to predictions boys uh, we are there's going to be some goals in this one so we'll go ahead and and have uh, Justin kick us off with his prediction for the 22nd and Trafico happening on Saturday at BMO. Wow. Yeah. I can't believe we're already at 22 of these things, man. That is, that is ridiculous, but it fits my prediction because I'm going to go two two. Uh, I think that I just can't pick a winner of this game right now, which is why I think those odds look so good for a galaxy. Um, but yeah, it, it's such a tight game, even though LAFC are at home, uh, I just don't think they're firing on all cylinders right now. And I think Galaxy are, um, even though we talk about form not mattering. And uh, yeah, obviously high scoring every single game. So there's got to be goals. I think you mentioned the average is, is over four goals a game. So I'm right around there. And yeah, it's always easy to not pick a winner so that I don't have to hop either side. But really, uh, it's it's difficult. I'm not sure uh, who's going to who's going to come out on top of this one. Rob, you want to um, give yours? I, I, don't, I, don't Rob, I don't think. Sure, sure. No, I'll, I'll give mine because okay. I agree with Justin. I was going to call a two-two as well, um, and, and along the same lines, like it, 
a a loss isn't season defining. Uh, a win is a big psychological boost, and and I think these teams are going to go really really hard. And at the end of the day, it's they're going to end up right around those expected goals, which is four, which is the two two, like like Justin's calling, you know. So I think just based on numbers, uh, just based on what we've seen in El Trafico before, um, it's going to be a, a two two tie. Uh, well, great minds think alike because I'm right there with you guys. I'm also at a 2-2 draw. So my my head pick was a 2-2 draw. My heart pick was going to be like a 3-2, 4-3. I think there are going to be goals in this game, guys. Uh, the, the numbers prove it. I don't think that's going to change. I think there are going to be a lot of goals. Um, you know, the, the Galaxy for as much, you know, improvement that we've tried to do defensively this year hasn't shown up uh, in practice you know we've get we have given up a lot of goals i think that last score line was a little bit of a not necessarily a fluke but the weather had a lot to do with that score line um you know i think both teams were struggling on that on that sort of wet pitch uh, at Dignity Hall Sports Park last week. So, um, yeah, I I'm going for a high-scoring game as well. Again, my heart will always say Galaxy win, but I think uh, I think this one's going to be uh, – I think both teams are going to share the spoils on this particular game. We have Big Heck out there that's calling a 3-2 Galaxy win. Last goal scored by the unbreakable one, JP, Joe Pants. Uh, I saw a couple of other 3-2s as well. Um, you know what? If it's three two, it's it's gonna be silly season for for Galaxy fans out there who, I mean, they they're already going buck, uh, and a a El Trafico win would just ramp that up that much more. I saw a tweet out there, Justin, that that I thought was really really funny, and I think it's very accurate. Which which said, uh, if you thought Galaxy fans were bad when we were terrible we're going to be insufferable when we're up uh and and i think we're we're already seeing uh galaxy fans buck on these socials and i mean that's a lot of uh, a lot of banter's going back and forth and it's a lot of it is is elite and like you you called at the very very top of the show justin uh let's let's make sure to keep it you know just nice and uh you know uh not everybody like or passionate and and you know attack each other. Uh, let's let's keep it respectful, right? So I, I think we heard that in the the press conference um, today. They they asked Gaston to give a like a, a PSA basically to keep it respectful, right? And 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 he did so. So um, anyway, uh, do you have anything else to add here before we get on out of here, Justin? I I love that ending. I think it's it's a great point you make because mm. Galaxy fans are are gonna be up and excited if they get that win as they should be. But it's also you know showing that they're being rewarded kind of for sticking around during the hard times as well. I don't speak Spanish, but I think there's that saying "en las buenas y las malas," right? When yeah. it's good and it's bad. Absolutely. And I think uh, I think you look at the past you know year. You look at the difference that a year makes. A year ago. Galaxy fans weren't even in that stadium, right? They were protesting. Right. And now a year later, they're sitting at the top of the table as happy as could be heading into an El Trafico. Um, so I think, you know, just appreciate that. Appreciate what Will Koontz has done for this club um, within the space of a year. And look at LAFC not doing so well uh, a, a year later on. They had come off of, you know, a, a double win. And now they are in a much different spot as well. Mm -hmm. Uh. Ananda, we have a, a a very very insightful daddy chill from from uh, Darren twenty one. <laughs> uh, shout out Lakuna Matata. Um, and shout out to to B loves. Yeah, shout out Lakuna Matata, uh, Justin. That's our our long suffering Liga G team, our, our um, pro clubs team. So uh, we did not make the playoffs, so we're, we're so hurt about it. Uh, shout out to B loves out there as well. And then before we get out of here, uh, Justin, let us know one more time where where the folks can find you online and where they can find your work. Yeah, absolutely. At Justin Ruderman underscore on Twitter. And if you like some YouTube content, search up Upper 90 on YouTube. We do like some YouTube content. My, my latest and... video is actually on a uh, day on Yovelich. So there you go. Oh, there you go. Hey, Decky. Galaxy fans, go ahead and check out just on day on Decky. Um, you know what? Five goals in six games. Not a bad start to the season. Ananda, anything else to add before we get on out of here? 
Well, you know, I'm a stats person, so I will leave you guys with this. Uh, please do watch the special teams. So as you guys know, the Galaxy lead the league in most set-piece goals. Five, if you include the McCarthy own goal, which, by the way, McCarthy gets conceded. the team. That's another – conceded, sorry. Uh, another storyline that you guys should out look out for. Uh, LEFC, though, not far behind. They have conceded three set-piece goals this season. So special teams, one to watch out for. And the uh, the latest Galaxy like um, you know about the, the latest match, there was a a cutaway and you can hear Ricky going set pieces guys set pieces. So, you know I, I know it's something that they've at least talked about. So, uh, Galaxy fans out there who are suffering over set pieces, Daddy Chill, they are working on it. Uh, <laughs> so. Anyway, um, yeah, so that, that's pretty much it for us, guys. Uh, after El Tráfico, after LAFC, after another battle of Los Angeles, the Galaxy will face Vancouver uh, on the road at BC Place on Saturday, April 13th at 7.30. That game preview will be on Thursday, April 11th at 9 p.m. We'll be bringing you a special guest for that one as well. Stay tuned, subscribe so you know who that is, and Tune in on the 11th at 9 p.m. We'd like to give a, a special thank you to our guest, Justin Ruderman, for coming on and breaking down everything you needed to know about LAFC and his perspective on El Tráfico. Thank you so much, man. We, we appreciate it. Yeah, thank absolutely. You. Thank you. Thank you guys for having me on. It's been a great time. Hey, um, well, guys, you know where to find Justin. Uh, I, I know I'll find him at BMO this weekend on Saturday, so I'll see you there, sir. Uh, and then please, everyone, stay safe, be smart, be respectful, and uh, just enjoy some soccer on Saturday. Um, before we get out of here, of course, subscribe to this humble little pod, this humble little channel, and we'll go ahead and bring you that match reaction for El Trafico Monday at 9 p.m. Monday, say. G